Of all of America's first ladies, Eleanor Roosevelt was truly a first among equals, charting her own distinctive course both during and after her White House years. Mo Rocca has her story. Ladies and gentlemen, the most admired woman of our time, Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt. In 1960, the chairman of the board asked the first lady of the world if she had one word of encouragement for viewers of his Frank Sinatra ABC special. That one word would be hope. Just hope? Yes, it's the most neglected word in our language. Yes, hope. High hopes. Those high apple pie in the sky hopes. Propelled Roosevelt to become a globe-trotting humanitarian. Man must have freedom in which to develop his full stature. And for 12 years, America's first lady, emphasis on first. She's the first first lady to cross the country by air. She's the first first lady to have press conferences. And as David Michaelis chronicles in his new biography, published by Simon & Schuster, a Viacom CBS company, Eleanor Roosevelt was also the first first lady to write a daily newspaper column and host a weekly radio show. We still see in the youth of today an absolute faith in their own ability to work out our destinies. Of all the monikers, titles assigned to her, which was the one that was her favorite? She registered herself over and over again as homemaker. What? Are you serious? Or housewife. She thought it was, that you were a genius if you could make a home anywhere you were. Feeling at home with herself was a lifelong journey for Eleanor. She was born in 1884 into material wealth and emotional scarcity. She wasn't allowed to show fear. She wasn't allowed to cry. If she was upset, she was told to go in the bathroom, put her head over the tub, and cry there. She adored her father, the brother of future President Teddy Roosevelt, but he struggled with addiction. Her mother, said to be the second most beautiful woman in New York, openly mocked Eleanor for her serious demeanor, calling the young girl Granny. It was a way of saying not just, you look old and sour, you look like something I don't want to be, and I don't want my family to have anything to do with it. It was a real excommunication. And what did that do to Eleanor? Well, she herself would say, I wanted to sink into the floorboards. Orphaned at the age of nine, she was engaged at 19 to her fifth cousin, the ambitious Franklin Delano Roosevelt. What did Franklin see in Eleanor? Well, she had one thing. She was the president's niece. He worshipped Theodore Roosevelt. Meeting Eleanor was the moment where he could say to himself, by God, I'm marrying that woman and I'm going to be president of the United States myself. The marriage would become one of history's great political partnerships. She immediately feels useful. Useful and therefore loved. And I think the great disconnect for them was in discovering that they could only be useful to each other, but might not make each other happy as intimates. Although they would have six children, Franklin would find romantic love with other women. Eleanor would seek intimacy with both men and women. Throughout Eleanor's life, she channeled her own hunger for affection into compassion and service to others. She was a noticer of other people who didn't like to be noticed herself. She much preferred the attention to be on you than on her. During World War I, while Franklin served as Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Eleanor visited Arlington National Cemetery daily to bear witness to the burials of fallen American soldiers. If nobody turned up, she felt absolutely it was her duty to stand by that grave and to observe everything and listen to taps. I was just thinking, I began every morning for a number of years when I was writing this book, uh, listening to taps. And Taps is sort of the Eleanor Roosevelt anthem because in it she was able to connect through sorrow and pain to the country in its most sorrowful and painful moments. Loss. It's what her life was primarily based on.
By the time Franklin was elected president, he had been stricken by polio. Eleanor became his eyes and ears, going right to the source of the country's pain during the Depression, meeting miners in Appalachia, challenging Southern Democrats to support anti-lynching legislation, and during World War II, visiting internment camps where Japanese Americans were imprisoned simply because of their race. She brought back the truth. He always trusted that she was going to give the truth that others might not or they might sugarcoat. The First Lady was often alone at the wheel, driving herself cross-country. People looked into her eyes and saw somebody who was listening to them and who was somehow seeing them in ways that they maybe had never been seen. She was letting you know that your government belonged to you, but more importantly, you belonged to your government and you had something to do. Democracy was a two-way street. After Franklin died, Eleanor spent more time in this stone cottage at Val Kill, New York, her longtime sanctuary. But she never retired. Now, here is Mrs. Roosevelt. In 1959, she hosted her own public television show. Now, I'd like to know what your opinion is on that question. Now in her 70s, she held forth with younger leaders, like Senator John F. Kennedy. Well, there are 17 million Americans who have a substandard diet. And then there it so happens that David Michaelis's mother, Diana Teed Michaelis, worked on the program. And a four-year-old David once met Mrs. Roosevelt. I was trying to get a stick of gum off the First Lady, off my mother's boss. She was fresh out of Juicy Fruit, and that's the memory, but what I took away and feel still is this feeling of a person from whom goodness was literally pouring forth from these eyes that were alive and radiant. Where do you think that light comes from? I think it comes out of fearlessness. There's finally a lack of fear of being who you are so that you can be that person for millions of people. Eleanor Roosevelt died on November 7, 1962, mourned by millions the world over a once uncertain child of privilege turned global champion of the dispossessed. You must have wondered, what would her message to people be today? Live your life imaginatively, excitingly, be yourself. Be, be the best possible version of yourself while, while you're here. It's not gonna be for very long.